Hello, Slayers and self saboteurs My name is TB Skyne, and welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV, where we, have, uh, after giving my poor editor a hell of a lot of work to do, we managed to complete the Dark Knight class quest, at least the one up to level 50. Now there's another one waiting for us, which we'll probably go and do a little bit later on, as we, in conjunction with going through the main story quest. But before we delve into any of that, I think it is time to do something I've been putting on since, since like, very long time ago. I g gained that quest ages ago, which is I put together a party and we are going to go see Odin. And this is where I finally get put to the proper test of my uh, Dark Knight tanking abilities. He looks like himself. Oh yeah, he does. A little, a lot more elaborate, like a lot more detail all over him, which is sort of in the vein of, which is sort of in the style of, of like what Final Fantasy XIV has been doing generally. It is sort of in the style of what Final Fantasy XIV has been doing. Interesting. Okay, I need to just rearrange my thing real quick. Get that over there, because it's a defensive ability. Get that over there, get that over there. Get that over there, get that over there. Okay. So, uh, I just need to not stand in AoEs, right? And don't cleave people. All right. Hello! I thought he might be more of an agile fella running and, and moving around a lot, but it doesn't seem that way. The music is excellent. Falknut, yeah? Ein Herjar. Is that mean he... Oh, well. One would have thought that would be the one he uses to summon ads, but... Sangatal. Oh, there's his ads. Guess other people are taking care of those. So Gungnir is Odin's spear for Norse mythology. It's legendarily said to be unstoppable, like once he throws it, it keeps going until he decides that it's not going to go any longer. So it can throw, be thrown through mountains, it can be thrown through great halls, it can be thrown through anything and everything. Okay, we're still alive, so that's good. Shin Sansetsuken. That's just going to kill us all, right? Yeah, but we got him down before that. <laughs> The animation is really cool, though. I can imagine. <laughs> but you'd only get to see it once. <laughs> A little disappointed that he didn't have anything to say, at least. You know. But hey, got some tombstones. Ooh. Oh, that's where that's from. Well, I can't use it, but I'll greed for it. <laughs> Thanks for the help, everyone. Santetsuken. Literally just means metal cutting blade. Yeah. before the Dark Divinity was commendable, adventurer. I'm relieved you escaped the battle with your life. 
And it was not for nothing, I'm my dad. Brother Isumiyan and I have observed something remarkable, though I should like to discuss it with him present. Ah, and see how he comes. Adventure, I would offer you thanks for all you've done today. I am Isumiyan, master of the Conjurer's Guild. Ah, but no doubt you are keen to learn more of the Dark Divinity. Very well. I shall share with you what I have gleaned from observing your battle. To begin, felling a primal allows the ether of their physical manifestation to return to the land. This much you know, right? Odin seems to be subject to the self-same laws, yet his sword, the Sansetsuken, remains even after his body vanishes. Thus, we thought to examine the blade, and in so doing, found that its etheric density is unimaginably high. Now, we had always assumed that the being who brandished the weapon was Odin, but what if we err? What if the sword Santetsuken is, in and of itself, the Dark Divinity? An unforeseen conclusion, yes, but one that clarifies much of the primal. Indeed, that would explain why Odin has never truly fallen. No one could have thought to destroy the blade. And if the Santetsuken is the primal, could it not conjure itself a new wielder? Yet, just as Ifrit's tempered or Leviathan's drowned, Odin must needs have his sundered to offer crystals in his name. Unless he drinks of the Shroud's ether. Such a weak source of power could be why it takes time for the Dark Divinity to manifest again. You see, Adventure, our theory accounts quite nicely for two of the mysteries that for so long surrounded the Primal. And yet, as Oapeps Pepsi hints, I cannot, I cannot read that name as anything other than Oap Pepsi. <laughs> A third mystery remains. If there are no sundered, how does Odin sustain himself? I cannot imagine the wishes of those who first summoned him were so strong as to echo through the centuries. Brother, I do not think our theory is flawed. No, this discovery makes clear the holes that, in what we've so long believed that the primals, we must revisit the beings with a keener eye. I will inform Master Uriashi if we have what we have gleaned here, adventurer. I urge you to do the same should something else of Odin occur to you. But today is a victory all the same. We have the Santitsuken, and the mysteries that remain pale, remain pale and import to the act of locking of the Primal away. With any luck, we can seal the sword and end the Dark Divinity's ride. Brothers, something terrible has happened. The Santitsuken is gone. One of my own men has stolen away with the blade and left nary a trace to track his flight. I never dreamt he would do such a thing, and I stayed my hand too long to stop him. What? Are you men so disloyal as to rob you? Tell me, Lewin, why would someone do such a thing? Forgive me, brother, but I cannot say. I'm as astonished as you. The thief was a sworn man of God's quiver, as true as any Gridanian arrow. For moreover, what could he stand to gain by stealing so fell a blade? Mayhap the soul of the thief was stolen along with the blade. It is within the power of all primals to bend mortals to their wills. If the Santetsuken and Odin are one and the same, then the sword may now control the now sundered man. Is that not right, brother? That, that is indeed possible. Gods, how could I have been so blind as that? No, yeah, pick up the possessed devil god sword. That'll work out well for everyone. Oh, Lord Lewin, it is I who needs to apologize. Had I been more wary, I would have foreseen this. Instead, I have cast us dearly and placed you and your men in great danger. Let us not cry over lost swords. Bolord Lewin sent forth the god's quiver and wood whalers to scour the shroud. Brother Oepisi and I will devote ourselves to devising a way to fell Odin after the Santetsukin is ours again. Yes, brother, indeed. It would be a poor thing to have the blade in our grasp and no way to destroy it nor dull its bite. Adventurer, I will call upon you again when we have something to show for our efforts. Until then, go in peace. Ooh, ominous. What do you think of how the Dark Knight characterizes the Warrior of Light? Most of the game leaves the characterization up to the player, but this one makes the Warrior of Light someone with a deep frustration at constantly being asked to do tasks and kill creatures and people on others' behalf, so much so that they spawn an angry clone. I like it. Like, I think that's very cool. Like, that, that they finally sort of characterize the player at all. 
that's something that the game has not been especially willing to do otherwise. Like, which is, which, like, makes sense because that's part of the point of the character is that they're not supposed to get in the way, right? Like, they're not supposed to get in the way of you and your own characterization and your own thoughts and feelings about your character. But I think they tap into something that's like... What was I saying? Holy shit, what's that? Oh my god. Oh my god, you're a fucking Power Rangers villain. Holy shit. Oh, <laughs> that is... That is a fucking Rita Repulsa-ass monster. Like, you're gonna... You're gonna go and fight the Megazord at the end of the episode. That's what you're gonna do. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, that's spectacularly gaudy. It's the Garo event gear. This is a Sentai hero? Well, okay, yeah. I, I clocked the Sentai vibes then. But like, damn. Anyway, what the fuck was I saying? Right, uh, this quest is a level 50 quest, so we should be able to take it at the very least. Um, and talking about the game, yes, getting in the way of the player's characterization, right. Um, what the game here taps into is, like, notice the quests that they put us on, right? Like, the like, the quest of like, oh, hero, adventurer, some shitheads, some, some random dudes, little monster guys, have stolen my things. Would you please go and kill X number of bears and collect their bear asses and get my things back? Like, they chose some quests specifically that are sort of like MMO uh, tropey in the way that it's people just like running up to you and demanding that you put your life on the line for their whatever. Um... Because, like, some... Oh, some civilians wandered into a place where they got kidnapped by thing because they're dumb, asshole, Id moron idiots. And you're going to have to escort them back out of the stronghold after you save them. Like, that's... That quest where you have to escort the civilians out... Um... Of... Of the... Of the, of the quest area while defeating Amalja. Like, that to me reads fully as, like, they're... Like... I was getting frustrated by how fucking slow they were moving. And I think that's deliberate. Like, I think that specifically they sort of replicated some of the more annoying quest types. Because what they're tapping into is specifically the frustration that every MMO player on the planet has, which is the completing a whole bunch of pointless quests, right? Having to go and do a bunch of busy work for people who don't seem to have any capacity to fend for or care for themselves. Um... Which I think is like, yeah, that's a clever way to do it, because like that's that's a frustration that you can reliably count on every player to like have felt on some level, so that again you're not imposing too much characterization on you. Hey, don't you think that all these random go collect five things and like go like play babysitter for these NPCs quests? Don't you think those are really annoying? Yeah, you do. <laughs> it doesn't land that well if you characterize your W OL as a nice person who likes helping out, but I guess it still works somewhat with how many quests require killing something which naturally take its toll. Yeah, that's the other thing also is like, everyone keeps asking the warrior of like to kill people and like, and and commit murder. And then the game sort of itself has the thing of, oh, but killing people is bad. Like, really? Are you sure about that? Um, so like it taps into some things that are like, oh, okay. Like this is, this is like a, a, a reasonable way to do that characterization. I love the line after what happened in Uldah, which is arguably why, what a lot of people would think after the banquet. Oh no, yeah. Like, that's the other thing. Like, when when we blow up at the merchant, that's completely reasonable because he's being a fucking asshole. He sent me to like, to kill a whole bunch of monsters and then he complains when the things I bring back have some blood on them, right? Like, motherfucker, what did you think was gonna happen? Um. Yeah, I should have let Leviathan kill you all. Like, that's, again, giving voice to Brick's frustrations. Um, but that's the other thing to remember is also, like, it's not just that it's 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 the Warrior of Light's own frustrations. It's that plus the effects of, like, um, of, like, the Dark Knight job gem. Like, the Dark Knight gem that comes from that hero of old who also got very frustrated with doing the right thing all the time. And that's, like, that's, like, amplifying all of your dark side shit. Right? Like, because that dark side shit was in you before, but the gem is the one that, like, pumps it up to 11 so that it can manifest. Anyway. Oh, hey! More people are here. 
Oh, oh, okay, it's... I thought... Wait, no. That's not... That's cloth, right? Yeah, it is, yeah, it's a shirt. I thought that was... I thought that was some... I thought that was a bold cleavage, but, like, you've kind of managed to... to almost establish that illusion just by matching the skin tone. Damn. Like, from a distance? That looks... Whew, <laughs> that looks spicy. Anyway, hello, horse chiffon. I am possessed by a demon now. Black chocobos, all well and good, but the true reward for your efforts is the exoneration of your comrades. They shall be released upon the completion of certain, certain minor formalities, which I shall see to personally. In the meantime, pray return to Fort Tom Manor. The Count has done so already and will Count doubtless be eager to discuss the day's events. I really like this sword. Thank you so much for that, by the way. Ooh, hello. Oh, nice. Oh, that's cool. Like, that's a big... That's, this is kind of a Warcraft armor, almost. Like, how big and chunky it is, but I like that. That sits really well on us. I was not present at the trial, but my father told you of your performance. He said you were a wonder to behold. Why are you trying to become the talk of the city? Because if you are, you're doing an admirable job of it. <gasps> it brings me joy to see you in good health, Master Ulfram. How narrowly do you avoid a grievous miscarriage of justice? Uh, full glad am I that the Fury blessed you with his... Oh, no, he's the manservant. Full glad am I that the Fury blessed you with his strength to overcome your foes. It was the other guy who had that voice. Anyway... Alone smiles on us yet again, Master Ulfam, guiding you to victory and setting your comrades free. I confess, I did fear for your safety, which is not to say I doubted your prowess, you understand. Merely knew the strength of your opponents. <clears throat> you have a habit of exceeding my expectations. Best thing to of the heavens, Ward, while the city's elite looked on by the fury. Anyone who hasn't been paying attention to you surely will do so from now on. My lord! Oh, right, him. Uh, we've received a message from the vault. His eminence, the archbishop, requests the presence of Master Ulfram. An invitation from the archbishop? What an honor. A personal summons is indeed a great honor, and given recent events, you would be wise not to delay. Go, Master Ulfram. We shall speak soon. Yay, let's go talk to the evil Pope. A, a priest will be waiting for you outside the vault. Identify yourself to him and he will escort you inside. Evil Pope. Evil Pope. Evil Pope. And I will say, like, Dark Knight feels like a pretty natural con continuation of, like, the warrior storyline too, right? Like, the warrior storyline is very much also about also deals with, like, inner beast and, like, all the darkness inside you that you cannot control kind of thing. So, like, that feels like a very natural progression. We're honored to receive you, Master Ulfram. This way, please.
I have heard the tales of your many grand endeavors. The Lord Commander has also been most effusive in his praise. I am Thorin the Seventh, Archbishop of the Ishgardian Orthodox Church, and I bade you come here that I might offer my personal apologies. You will forgive me for not calling upon you as courtesy would dictate, but as you can see, my more sprightly days are long behind me. But I digress. Your companions were wrongly accused of heresy and subjected to gross indignities. This, I am sorry to say, was the result of negligence on the part of our nation's protectors. Negligence born of an excess of zeal. Is that not so, Sir Zephyrin? Yes, Your Eminence. Regrettably, it would appear that we of the Heaven's Ward were in receipt of erroneous information. Sir Grino has ever been headstrong. He pressed charges before the truth had been ascertained, for which I most sincerely apologize. An unfortunate misunderstanding born of an earnest desire to serve Ishgard, but one which should never have occurred. For who could doubt the character of those who bested Shiva and drove the Horde from the steps of faith? Not I. That much is certain. That will be all, Sir Zephyrin. I would speak with our guest in private. Your Eminence, I... As you wish, Your Eminence. That will be all for today. Hey, yo, so are you possessed by the devil? Or more like an Ashian? is a luxury rarely afforded one in my position. Now, tell me, young man, what do you know of the Ashians? I know how to kill them. Much and more, I shouldn't wonder. Being the bringer of light. You should know that I myself have met with them, have entertained them as guests, even. Those harbingers of chaos and strife offered us power that we might continue our war against the dragons. I have no intention of aiding their cause. Of course, nor less of being their puppet. Yet, were I to refuse them outright, I should learn naught of their true objectives and remain powerless to stop them. Thus have I hearkened to their words with interest and paid lip service to their beliefs, biding my time and preparing for the inevitable conflict. And why do I tell you this? Because there is naught in this world they fear more than the power of the Warrior of Light. Warrior of Light, that's me, definitely just the light. If we are to rid ourselves of these vile interlopers, we must need to work together. With our combined strength, I have faith that we can wrest Eorzea from their grasp and pave the way for a lasting peace. Think on it.
Don't you worry, Mr. Pope Man. Brick is a warrior of light, just as, just, just ex exactly the same degree that he's definitely only straight. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a friendly old man. He's not suspicious. He's like, look, he was being very honest with us and forthright and talking about how, how like, oh no, yeah, Ashians, yeah, I know about. It. I've just, I've just been messing with them. Like, I've just. Yeah, yeah, sure. I've been saying, like, oh, yeah, maybe I'll agree. Maybe I'll take the power. But obviously, I, won't, I, I would never do that. And I'm definitely not playing you against them and them against you as a means to secure a more beneficial position for myself. I go, who would ever do that? Who would do that? Politicians certainly wouldn't do that. I nearly cried when you stepped forward at the tribunal, Brick. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Praise alone that Master Alvino and Mistress Totaro did not come to harm. Uh, uh, pardon me, is that what you require? I'm good. Oh, narrowly did we... Uh, well, I already had that one. There you are. I confess, I was more than a little concerned when I learned that you had been summoned to the vault. What did they want with you? Well, well. A formal apology and an admonishment of those responsible. I see my fears were wholly misplaced. By the gods! The Archbishop freely admits to consorting with Asians. So, their ambitions extend to Ishgard as well. We will have new primals to contend with ere long, of that you may be certain. Tis but a matter of time. Yet shorn of the support of our missing allies, what can we realistically hope to achieve? I mean, I keep killing them myself. <gasps> In the midst of all the excitement, I completely forgot to tell you. When I was asking around about the Scions, I heard the most awful rumor. General Rauburn is to be executed for crimes against the Sultanate. General what? If the Flame General dies, we will lose a staunch ally and the one man capable of holding the Sultana's assassins to account. Lord Orshifon was wise to counsel restraint, but this business will brook no delay. We cannot permit this execution to take place. We must save Raoban. Ra- uh, Okay, uh, did he change his name in between the two? Okay. It used to be Raban. Once upon a time, he was Raban. Now it's Rauban. Okay. Well, sure. Fair enough. I I guess. Gods, I hope you're not too late to save General Rauban. Rauban. Fucking hell. Rauban. <clears throat> yeah, he became German in the meantime. Yeah, he's General Rauban now. Yeah, he had he had the German uh, operation to become German. Yeah. <laughs> So now, now he's now he's very he's very Deutsch. He drinks only the uh, good lager, yeah, and uh, celebrates. <laughs> no, I swear to God, I swear to God, and I heard characters in the voiceover of Realmborn call him Roban. Specifically, I'm pretty sure Melwib did. Yeah, he makes good sauerkraut now. <laughs> I should have told you sooner about the execution, I mean, but what with the trial and everything? Oh. Okay, well. <gasps> Do we get to see her again? I want to hear her new voice. Though the situation calls for urgency, it would avail us little to charge headlong into Uldar without a plan. Before we can formulate a plan, however, we must first learn how things stand in the Sultanate, which is why I propose we visit Limsa Minsa. Ah, you heard me right. While you were about your altruistic endeavors, I acted as an intermediary in trade negotiations between Hortus Fortan and a Lominsan consortium. During set negotiations, an opportunity to send word to the Admiral presented itself, and I duly seized it. I'm happy to report that we have yet have a stout ally in Limsa. The Admiral has pledged her full cooperation in any efforts to rescue Ra Rauban. 
I was about to say Raban again. <laughs> Accordingly, I have agreed to meet with her, that we might both discuss how best to proceed. Naturally, I told her to expect us both. Your presence never fails to embolden our allies, after all. When you arrive in Limsa Luminsa, make yourself known to Sergeant Sandthale at the Bulwark Hall in the lower decks. He will admit you to the bridge. Okay. Wait, hang on. I just saw over in the auto mod, the auto mod held back a message that said, haha, big sword goes swoosh, based on big sword being a sex-based term. <laughs> what Someone please put Big Sword in chat right now, like, Big Sword goes swoosh. Please say that, so I can allow that through. Because what the fuck? Oh yeah, no, it's holding all of them. Holy shit. I maybe shouldn't have asked 220 people to say the same thing all at once. God, okay, well, that, that's taken care of. That was stupid. Meaty Shaft apparently does not get caught. Curiously, Big Sword, ooh, that's too nasty, but Meaty Shaft? Nah, no problem. The Emma's been respect you. Say the word and I'll take it to her. I want to see her, yes. Friends, it is good to see you safe and well. I will admit I had not counted on you seeking let alone finding refuge within the Holy See, but full glad was I to learn that you had. Thankfully, we had allies there who took us under their wing, and theirs was not the only aid we receive, I suspect. When we fled Uldar, we fully expected to become wanted men, known to all and hounded at every turn. Yet that did not come to pass. On the contrary, it would seem the charges against us have not been made public. Might we have you to thank for that, Admiral? Sharp as ever, Master Elfino. On Marshal Terrapin's urging, the Elder Seed Seer and I demanded that the Syndicate suppress news of the Scion's alleged crimes until such time as irrefutable evidence could be found. Our argument was simple. Lacking proof to accuse the saviors of the realm of so unlikely a crime would have the people up in arms. In their wisdom, the Syndicate agreed, as you yourself have seen. There is something you should know. Some few days prior to the banquet, the Elder Seedseer and I were summoned for a private audience with the Sultana. There, she revealed her intent to announce her abdication, that she might pave the way for the establishment of an Uldan Republic. What? But such an announcement would have plunged the entire nation into chaos. She was well aware of that. It was for fear of what might ensue that she summoned us. Her grace wanted the elder Seedseer and I to lend Rauban a helping hand, you see? to aid him in preserving the peace during the transition. So, having somehow caught wind of her plan, Lollarito and Teledi plotted the Sultana's assassination in the hope of maintaining the constitutional status quo. But they must have known that her death would sow as much chaos as her abdication. Chaos from which Teledi alone might feasibly stand to profit. Surely Lollarito would never knowingly Ah, could it be? I dare not hope. The Uldan authorities have yet to announce the Sultana's passing. To allay any suspicion that may arise from Her Grace's absence, they have issued a statement to the effect that she is presently convalescing from illness. Mayhap they're waiting for a fitting moment to break the news. Or mayhap they know of some other reason to delay. Something else has been bothering me, Admiral. I was dismayed to learn that General Raoban is to be executed. Yet upon hearing the news, I could not help but wonder why he had been kept alive for so long. Pray mistake not my meaning. I am, of course, overjoyed that our friend still draws breath. 
and that he might yet be saved. But if his enemies truly wish to eliminate him, they could have done so immediately. I see no reason for this delay. Aye, you've struck upon an important point, Master Alphano. Following his capture, Raubarn had been held in the Marasaja pit within Uldar. In recent days, however, he has reportedly been moved to an unknown location. Queerly, it was not the brass blades who spirited him away either, but a band of soldiers decked in blue. The Crystal Braves. Aye. If I read the winds aright, the arrangement between Lord Lollorito and the Braves has come under strain. At any rate, if we're to rescue Raubarn, we'll have to find him first. And you'll be glad to hear that I have already entrusted the task to those best able to see it done. Our friends of Doma. Oh, yeah, huh. <laughs> Thanks for the resubscription, Aaron Jaeger. Okay. Damn, I thought I, hope, I was hoping they continue the voice acting so I could rest. Um, while I'm still here, I just want to say I love your character design, hot takes, and other character design videos. As an artist, I find the help with my own character designs. Well, I'm glad to be of help, Scalabor. And thank you for being along. So that is a... They've sort of tried to find someone with a similar style of voice to old Melwib. Like sort of the same, like the same timbre, um, the sort of the same pitch for the voice, but she has a very different delivery. Like a lot of the other Final Fantasy XIV new voices, she's more conversational, whereas the old Mel Whip was more declarational, right? Like as we talked about, like the old voice actors were told to read their lines and enunciate, which for her had the effect of like she's an admiral, right? Like for her, that has the effect that she's always sounding like she's giving commands, right? That was, and that was something like, like that really worked, as people are pointing out in chat. That's something that kind of worked about her old uh, performance, is that she always sounded as though she was a captain giving orders on a ship, right? Like, that kind of fit the character in a way that it really didn't fit the seed seer um, of, of Gridania, who spoke constantly as though she was delivering a book report and she was uncertain of the pronunciation of her words, right? Um... But with, with Melwith, it works because, like, she was also kind of written to be that way, to speak in declarative sentences and statements, right? L rather than questions and and sort of conversationally. Um, so I think that's that's probably a good good part of the reason why people are sort of nostalgic for it. Raban's survival is vital to the Orzean Alliance. We can ill afford to lose him. But I cannot send troops into Uldar to expel the end of the Alliance and war like as not. If there is to be a rescue, it falls to you and yours to attempt it. I would not have it any other way, Admiral. It was I who founded the Crystal Braves, and I who must take responsibility for their actions. Spoken like a true leader, Master Alfino. By way of a first step, you should seek out our Doman contact. You will find her among the frontier hands at Revenant's Toll, working in a kitchen. Fortunately, I am not in any way, shape, or form famous, so I'll just infiltrate them very quietly and no one will know. The Crystal Braves may no longer answer to me, but that does not absolve me of responsibility. As commander, I'm responsible for all the wrongs they have committed, all the havoc they've wreaked. Though it is useless to dwell on the past, I often wonder if I could have, should have done more for you and Roban that day. Leaving the banquet was tantamount to leaving you and yours for dead. Should you think me craven, I wouldn't hold it against you. But I will make this up to you, I, this I swear. Come what may, know that the scions of the Seventh Dawn can count on our cooperation. Would that we could join you in rescuing the flame, General, but the Sultan that would not kindly take take kindly to a foreign power on their soil. Allies are no. Alphino is small, but now he has depression. Yeah. <laughs> Minfilia, if she was based. Um, <laughs> damn, that is... 
That's a dancer, obviously, but that's a spicy dancer outfit. It's cute. Like, I like... Like, that's a strong choice, like, to have the pure black with, like, the pink. And then into the... And, of course, the flower. Yes, absolutely pink also. And then into the blonde hair. Like, that's a strong visual. Like, that's a lot of light and dark contrast. That's cool. And the... What? E, what? Hmm? What? What on earth? What on earth are those monk weapons? Oh, Yokai Watch. Of course that's Yokai Watch. It would be, wouldn't it? God, you people and your fucking drip all the time. Oh, that rules. That's really good. That's like, ah, uh, God, I can't remember the name. Is it a Kipao? Is that what it is? Or Chipao? Uh, I do not speak any form of, of Chinese or any Asian language, really. Um, that, like, with the with the bold, bright red, and then, like, the, like, contrasted against the blue, like, as a... Yeah, interesting. Like the thing of the like the the red covering up the. Ooh. Sweet. Uh, need to move on. Need to not be distracted. It was seen, sir, that my comrades have misjudged you. I realize this now, having witnessed the lengths to which your dream home are going for your sake. Well, I think there can be no doubt that you're a true friend to Iska, which is fortunate, as we've urgent needs with one of your skills. Pray, accompany me to the Beamer's Dominion at once. Okay. The Behemoth's Dominion. Can I fly over? Yes, good. X9 dungeons always give you more experience than X0. What, what does X9 and X0 mean in this context? There's a demon among us, sir. A fiend which cannot be suffered to live. The dream all may be willing to let a dangerous vigilante roam free, but we are not so foolish. What's our hero maims and murders knights sworn to the holy sea? None I know. A heretic you are, and a heretic you shall die. I mean, you know that that's not going to end well for you, right? Hello. The vile fiend! Do not think you can steal your true nature from them forever! We will expose you for the abomination that you are, I swear it! We of dark arts, corn sort of dragons, I'll bring you to justice even if it costs me my life! Shall we oblige him then? Oh hey, I know you! Oh, that's not a rest. Well, are you going to kill him, or shall I? You, you want him too, aren't you? This is the part where you beg for your life. Leave this lens if you value your life. We will not show you mercy again. I pray you do not make a habit of following men plotting to kill you into secluded areas. Or did you learn naught from Frey? So, you do know of him. I thought him fallen at the trial, but then I heard whispers of a man seen wielding his sword in battle. So tell me, what became of him? How did you learn the arts? By the gods. Though now that I think on it, it's just not the first time I've heard such a tale. We who consort with the darkness are never truly whole. There will ever be a part of us yearning to be free. We trained together, Frey and I. This was a strength beyond reckoning, but alas, it was not enough. It warms my heart to see that you carry on his legacy. That you have learned as much as you have with only his soul crystal to guide you, bespeaks your potential.
There is a matter I would discuss with you, but not here. My name is Sidurgo. Pray look for me at the Forgotten Knight in Ishgard. Given the circumstances under which you embarked upon this path, who's the small child next to you? I fear you do not yet understand what it means to be a Dark Knight. The first of us bared steel against one of the clergy. This is true. He sacrificed everything he once held dear in the name of justice. So must all who would walk in his footsteps. Mayhap you think this will earn you the love of the common man. You're wrong. To many, you will forever be a criminal, a fiend who sows chaos and discord. These people will listen to the lies of our enemies. They will do their utmost to cast you out, or worse, as they did to Frey. If you are not prepared to deal with these consequences, then surrender your sword and soul crystal to me now. You claim conviction, but your actions speak otherwise. The fuck does that mean? You spared a man who tried to murder you. Mercy, some would call it. Idiocy, I name it. Aye, that's right. I followed him and gave him the mercy he truly deserved. Look at me, Brick. Tell me what you see. The Ishgardians, doing, first Ishgardians to encounter Auras or Dravanians. We'd fled Garlemald's armies only to come to a land where we were mistaken for another nation's mortal enemy. They bared steel and came to kill us, but we did not die so easily. We spared them and sent them on their way. And how do you think they repaid our kindness? <laughs> With fire and blood, Brick. With death for every man, woman, and child. Make no mistake. These are the wages of mercy. If you would walk the path, then you must accept the truth, for your enemies already have. Level 52, okay. Let's see. As his voice trembles with rage, you take note of the young girl at his side. Though she avoids your gaze, you sense that she's watching you with a curious intensity. Interesting. Say to you, my wayfaring friend. So you wouldn't happen to be the man who slew the Tornberry King, would you? I knew it by the onion. I have a fine gent for you. Looking for you, that is. He has an appetizing proposal on the table, and I think you should pay him a visit. He's one of the treasure hunters at Camp Bronze Lake. Oh, and he will, of course, be there with his partner. The two are inseparable, but I'll let them tell you tell you more themselves. Well, off to Lenosha with you. Oh, gee, thanks. And I'll pick up whatever this is, too. Ah, uh, there's an industrious ant. An adventurer in need of a bit of business, if I'm not mistaken. The ant hill you want is Amagina's son's mineral concerns. Something's kicked it over good. They put out word for adventures. Have skill, will move fast, that sort of thing. Perfect for you, I'll warrant. The clients? Bit of a handful, might aggressive, but nothing can handle the twins. You'll find them in the Miner's Guild. Talk to Cesaruka. He's the milder of the two. Thanks for the tip. I'm gonna ignore it for a while, anyway. Let's go find the Dolmen that we're actually here for. Oh, talk to the Brass Blade guarding the Rising Stone for a... for fun. Okay, sure, why not? It's not like Roban is gonna get executed soon or anything, so... Sup, fucker? You! Easy now, friend. I'll not raise the alarm. I'm not fool enough to believe the rumors. That said, I cannot well let you pass. Orders are orders.
This is where you just want to give in to the Dark Knight and kill the fucker, right? Easy. Okay, so there aren't any stairs in here. Fair enough. Aren't any stairs in here. There's the stairs. <laughs> Hello. Master Brick, I knew in my heart that you were safe, but to see you again in the flesh, words cannot well express my relief. Even as victory feasts were taking place, the Crystal Braves turned upon us and took the rising stones by force. Amid the chaos, some few of my compatriots and I were able to slip away unnoticed. Since then, we've remained in Revenant's toll, keeping watch over the mutineers while awaiting your return. You've done well by us, and we Dormans do not soon forget our debts. We swear to do all in our power to aid you. Shortly before you arrived, I received word from Limsa Laminsa that you were searching for General Rawban. As the Admiral will have informed you, he was recently moved from his cell in the Malazaja Pit. At that same juncture, Yu Yuhasa and the third unit were observed leaving the Rising Stones. This can be no simple coincidence. Their purpose, we believe, is to escort the Flame General to the scene of his execution. Suffice it to say, we have people shadowing the third. If you would join in the hunt, pray seek out Doar at the High Bridge, where I too am bound. Now that's a fucking lad. That's a unit. That's a boy. That's a chunky boy. No, no Final Fantasy monster here at all. Just, just a crocodile. Just a big ass motherfucking crocodile. With a very smug, self-satisfied look at that. And once again, gorgeous fucking dress, ma'am. Damn. I've been expecting you. Time is of the essence, so I shall be direct. Yu Yuhasa and his men are bound for Hat Halatali. We believe this is where they intend to carry out the execution. Hozan is presently keeping watch over the entrance. Let us make haste and join him. Okay. We are making haste. First go north, then go south, and then go south, and then go north. Make up your mind, make up your mind, make up your mind. Raban's ties to Halatali are well known. That Ilbert should choose this of all places to stage his execution is no coincidence. The fiend, are there no depths to which you will not stoop? You've come on a good time, my friends. But moments ago, the traitor Ilbert arrived and Elder entered Halatali. From this, we may be certain that General Raban is being held within. Let's go get the fuckers, then. Ooh, rings. There is no time to lose. General Alden may be executed at any moment. You must enter Halatali and free him from his captors. Please see to your preparations and tell me when you are ready to proceed. One of our own will accompany you inside. Pray, forgive me my lateness. Lady Ugiri! Master Alphano, I am pleased to see that the light of resolve shines in your eyes once more. Ah, yes. How pathetic I must have seemed to you when we last met. I am ashamed to record it. For a time, I was well and truly lost. But with the aid of my comrades, I have since refound my purpose, and I shall take care not to misplace it again. Since your escape from Ulda, my fellow Shinobi and I have shadowed the Crystal Braves every step, in hopes of learning the Scion's whereabouts. Oh, the voice actress... The voice actress for her died? Someone said that's tragedy, or is it just that she got recast? She was- what the fuck, what?! 
Oh, Jesus Christ. Holy fuck. Murdered by... Her and her children murdered by her husband. Jesus. Fucking hell. Regrettably, our investigation has yet to yield any useful information. Pray, forgive us. You need not apologize, my lady. We are grateful for all that you have done on our behalf. Besides, Ralban is no less a friend, and we cannot well abandon him to his fate. Hosan, the three of us shall attend to the Flame General's rescue. Pray, draw away the guards by the entrance. Take Doware and Higiri with you. With me! Gee, I wonder if maybe this is some kind of a trap. The General, but where has captors? I mislike the looks of this. General! You came. Yeah, and I'm sure that'll turn out fine. <laughs> He's bound by some manner of magitech device, yet I dare not force it open. It may well be booby-trapped. I've heard of such devices. The crystal brace possessed the key. Let us split up and look for it. Yeah, splitting up will... Hey, is that Ilbert? That will not be necessary. Oh, you Yuhasa. Pray do not take it personally, my friends. You're the victims of harsh economic conditions. Happily, you will not suffer for long. This poison will convey you swiftly onto the bosom, bosom of Thal, where I hope to join you after the passing of many prosperous years. Force the gate. Can do. What, is it aggressive towards me now? Is it attacking me? <laughs> How in the world is this thing that sturdy? How is it not just a thing you hit once and then it's gone? up, numb nuts? Bet you weren't thinking you'd see me again. My thanks. <coughs> Slowly, General. You're yet weak from your ordeal. Nevertheless, we must quit this place. I should have known. What are clever contrivances to the warrior of night? Well done, hero. Oh, do I finally get to kill you guys? That would be lovely. Ilbert. 
You mean to struggle on, then? Very well. If you would stand in my way, I will cut you down like all the rest. Hey, I recognize you. Come, Scions. Let's get this over with. This changes nothing. Jesus. It's over, Elbert. Lay down your arms and surrender yourself to justice. Justice? Justice for what exactly? T'was not I who assassinated the Sultana, boy. Ere we debate who is responsible for the assassination, I would ask whether an assassination took place at all. Oh, clever little shite. If you think you fight for justice, lad, you best wake up. The truth is, you fight for whoever bloody well tells you to. Can you not see you're being used by the Scions, the city-states, even the Crystal Braves? They none of them care a whit what you want, only what you can do for them. And how do I know this? Because I'm the same. A pawn to be used as my master's see fit. All I ever wanted was to liberate my homeland, and I ate dirt to make it happen. But what have I achieved after all these years in servitude? Nothing. Not a bloody thing. If we ourselves are not free, free to think and to act, how are we ever to reclaim our own land? Know this. There is nothing I would not give to take back Alamigo. Nothing! Cool motive, still murder. Yeah. You'll not get away! No, Master Alvano. Now is not the time. I'm but a cripple and a fool. And still you came for me. I'm in your debt. Aw, oh, he doesn't have the... He doesn't have the old man beard anymore. Oh. We are all of us fools of fate, General. But even fools have a part to play. Rest assured, I was not planning to die till it avenged the Sultana. Still, your words are welcome, lad. Know this, Ilbert. There is nothing I would not give to see you pay for what you've done. My wealth, my arm, my life. Nothing. General, are you aware that Lord Lollarito has yet to announce the Sultana's death to the public? What? No. No, I was not aware of that, nor of anything else outside my cell. It is passing strange, though. I assumed the bastard would make it known at the first opportunity, and set about tearing down the Sultanate. As did we all. And it is indeed strange that he did not. Strange, or perhaps revealing. Now, I have no conclusive proof, nor do I wish to give you false hope. But I have reason to believe that her grace may yet live. What? But how can that be? Forgive me, friends, but it is not safe here. Let us continue this conversation without... The General is safe. What news without? My lady, the guards have been subdued as per your command. We have since kept watch over the entrance. There have been no further activities. 
Oh, Hydraze, thank you. Hydraze Zero, rather. Thank you for subscribing. Then Eelbert and his minions have fled via some other egress. Scoured the perimeter for signs of their passing. At once, my lady. What, no smoke bomb this time? General Alden, I presume. And the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. Who are you? Identify yourself. Pray do not be alarmed. My mistress is a friend, and I come bearing a message of goodwill. For your own safety, she bade me direct your steps to the Waking Sands. Know that Master Urianger awaits you there, along with others sympathetic to your cause. This is no ruse, I assure you. Uh, General Alden, if you will come with me, I have prepared a carriage that you may travel in comfort, safe from prying eyes. Oh yeah, no, let's just hand him over. This seems legit. Yeah, sure, that's fine. <laughs> that's perfectly fine. Oh, someone redeemed a design. Okay. Let's see. Oh, okay. See, that's an interesting samurai glam because you've essentially sort of turned the, it into more of a knightly. Like, this is much more sort of Western medieval European fantasy styled. And, like, the weapons sort of it has, still has the curve, but it sort of barely looks like a katana. That's interesting. That's an interesting way to do it. So, like, yeah, okay. That's cool. Like, it's well put together. Like, if everything fits with everything. Like, you've got a lot of neutral tones going on. Like, the blue that you're working with is kind of low-key. So it doesn't clash too much with the red hair. So that's a really well put together outfit. Yeah, that's cool. Like, you could probably get away with an even more ostentatious weapon, actually. Um, or, if you really want to play into the idea of, like, because this looked like sort of a simple wanderer, you could also get away with, like, finding the simplest, least decorated, like, most basic sword possible. Um, and use that. Like, that would sort of comport with the vibes of, like, sort of a general, like, simple wanderer character who is whose strength doesn't really lie in, like, the the special magic quality of the sword, but which lies in just the uh, skill of their swordsmanship. Whereas having the big magical weapon on top of that, like, that sort of marks you out as, okay, you may look simple, but there's some kind of special destiny or whatever, because you clearly have the, the destiny blade, or just in terms of character design, but I like it. I've spoken to Uranger via Link Pearl. He confirms the man's story. Roban? Roban is in safe hands. Let us make our own way to Whisper Bay. I have a way. Well, this still looks its own same old self. I guess this is where we find out something about uh, why Uriang Zhe has been chatting with Asians. Or not? My dearest friends, praise be unto the Twelve for delivering you from the clutches of treachery. Hello, Uriang Zhe. Pain, my son, and Master Papashan besides. Forgive me, Father. I should have been at Her Grace's side. Save your tears. The Sultana yet lives. You. It was I who arranged this gathering. And judging by your perplexed expressions, it would seem introductions are in order. I am Dulala, 
head of the Order of Noldthor, and member of the Syndicate. What you said about the Sultana, is it true? Is she alive? Young man, I understand you were with the Sultana when she drank from the poisoned goblet and collapsed. Would I be correct in assuming that you did not personally verify her grace's vital signs? Why ask when tis plain you know the answer? Oh, he gestures with the other, with the missing arm. Uh. Calm yourself, General, and let me finish. The truth is not as you imagine it. You are all victims of a most ingenious ruse. A ruse conceived to eliminate the threat posed by Teleji Adeleji. Tis my belief that Teleji plotted the Sultana's assassination alone, but that Lollarito caught wind of his plot and exploited it to his own ends. He sought to manipulate you into eliminating Teleji for him, and you duly obliged. At one fell swoop, he removed his two foremost rivals, all the while remaining above suspicion. God strike me down for a fool. But the Sultana, how can it be that she lives? She lives because Lollarito willed it. Her own lady-in-waiting is but one of his many little birds. By her sleight of hand, the poison was switched for a less deadly draught before it could reach her mistress's lips. Ah, that explains that scene at the end. Okay. Some manner of sedative, perchance, of a potency sufficient to induce a slumber like unto death. Were I to guess... I would say her grace is being held somewhere, dreaming dreams of a brighter Ulda, even as we speak. Oh, none more. I will never forgive Lolorito for his part in this. Though Lolorito's hands are far from clean, they did pluck her grace from the jaws of death. That must count for something. No, not really. And though one may call the man's methods into question, it cannot be denied that he knows the value of stability to the very gill like as not. He craves power, tis true, but he has no desire to depose the Sultana. Because she's more useful alive, but he also will not allow a republic, of course. Which is why it's very convenient for her to just be ill long term. I had never taken sides in your feud with the monetarists, but it was not for want of concern for our nation's welfare. Indeed, t'was out of the desire to see order restored that I furnished your Far Eastern friends with information and arranged this gathering. Yeah, order. Which order specifically? With, with whom on top, dare I ask? I hope you are ready to work, General, for there is much work to be done. Our first priority must be to bring matters back into balance. Lest you forget Her Grace's words, the true wealth of Uldar lies in the health, happiness, and hopes of her people. For which you, of course, only, only have the deepest of concerns, I'm sure. As for the more worldly kind of wealth, I am content to let Lollorito help himself to whatever Teleji Adeleji left behind. You, meanwhile, must do that which you alone can do. Rescue her grace and take your place at her side once more, for her sake and that of our nation. I had not counted on Prioress Dulala herself appearing. In my defense, my suspicions regarding the Sultana proved more prescient. 
Much remains to be done, but in rescuing Rohan, we've taken a vital first step towards resolving matters in Uldar. We couldn't have done it without you, Brick. Thank you. Dun, 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 dun. Huh. There were quests down here. Oh, drop dead Shiva. That would be the extra special heart mode of Shiva? Okay, cool. Uh... Pray return to the waking sands, huh? Well, with much to think about, that seems like a natural place to call this particular episode to a close. If you want to see the more, then you can either head on over to the Twitch channel and subscribe there. That'll give you access to the full VODs of everything that happens on the stream, including all of the grindy bits uh, that my <laughs> lovely editor thankfully cuts out for me. Um, if you want to watch the edited episodes uh, before they go live for everyone else, you have to become a member of the channel because that gives you early access to those particular things. You don't have to do both. You don't have to do either of them if you don't want to. But uh, yeah, that's all the self-promotion that I need to do because this is my job. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to be kind to one another. Have solidarity with those who are worse off than yourselves. And may the tides of history wash gently over us all. Oh, and fuck all of the power mongers in Ultaike. Every single goddamn one of them deserves to get the fucking...